the idea for this whole sermon series is that the Beatitudes and everything that Jesus teaches on the Sermon on the Mount is really about this amazing breakthrough idea Jesus came to earth with, which is that the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is near. It's here. It's within us. This radical idea that we can bring heaven to earth, not just for a few, but for all of us. And so that's what we're continuing to talk about today. How do we make space for everyone at this table? How do we make room for every person's gifts? How do we have a love that's so deep and so sincere and so full of God's goodness that past hurts can be healed and people can discover once again God's love? So my friends, I invite you to open your hearts and minds to this concept that indeed heaven is here with us in this room as we gather. Because God is here with us wherever we go. And let's begin our time together with a call to worship. Please stand and join me. Wake up, no more dozing. The time is now. The kingdom is here. Chains to be broken. Children to be loved. Hungry to be fed. We are somebody. God's people. Empowered and blessed. Called and sent. Wake up. Sing. Please be seated. And let us join our voices together, praying our opening prayer. Gracious God, our help and our hope, be with us today. Bless our time together as we seek your guidance and your love. 
May we grow in grace as we gather here as one people. May we know your love and help us to build your kingdom of love upon the earth. Amen. Well, are there children here who can help me today with a children's sermon? Thaddeus, would you help me? Uh, today, I really could use a good helper. Thank you. You're awesome. Let's give Thaddeus a hand. Well, my friend, I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about this truth we're talking about, which is that the kingdom of God is always with us and for us. Sometimes we need a reminder, don't we? Because sometimes this world does not look very much like heaven. There's lots of heartbreak and hard times, but we know Jesus is with us and for us. So Jim Monk, Mork, gave me these little crosses. Have you ever seen one like this? And here's what it says. It says, I carry a cross in my pocket, a small reminder for me of my faith and how I keep it through the things I can't foresee. It does not possess any special power, nor is it an answer to my prayers. It isn't meant to protect me from any of life's despairs. This cross is meant for me to keep my Savior close. It reminds me he'll be there when I need him most. A symbol to be grateful for today, an attempt to be my best, to please God and be like him and appreciate how I've been blessed. When I reach into my pocket to pull out a coin or key, the cross is here as a reminder of the sacrifice he made for me. I carry this small cross around for the reminder it will provide to travel with my Lord and Savior and allow him to be my guide. I like that little reminder, and I wondered if you would help me pass these out so everybody in the room gets one. Could you help me with that? Maybe we could use one or two more helpers, too, with this project, if anyone wants to volunteer. Thank you, Nick. The young at heart here. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. We want to make sure, and you know, if there's someone you can give one to, please just, uh, just give us the two sign so we know to give you one to share as well. And I'll do this side. Thank you. And thank you, Jim, for sharing these with us. Can you pass these down the row? Thank you. Did we miss anyone? Raise your hand if we missed you. Nice job. We can put any extras on the table in the back uh, so you can take one uh, home with you or take one to share. Awesome. Did, did you get one? Um, Don't forget that. Thanks, Thaddeus. You did a great job today. You forgot one, too. <laughs> there you go. Excellent. Let's say a prayer. Oh, gracious God, indeed your kingdom is near, but it's easy for us to forget. So we ask that you would place so many reminders on our path that we can't help but notice. You are here, you are working, and you are inviting us to share in your good work. Amen. Our scripture for the morning comes to us from two different versions of the gospel. One is the message, and in Matthew 4, 17, the message says, change your life. God's kingdom is here. And in Matthew 4, 17, in the New International Version, it says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Now the message from Matthew 10, 5 through 8, says this. Don't begin by traveling to some far off place to convert unbelievers. 
and don't try to be dramatic by tackling some public enemy. Go to the lost, confused people right here in the neighborhood. Tell them that the kingdom is here. Bring health to the sick. Raise the dead. Touch the untouchables. Kick out the demons. You have been treated generously, so live generously. And in Matthew 4, 17, from the NIV version, these 12 Jesus set out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick. Raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. The word of God for the people of God. Let's pray together. Oh, gracious God, we come before you today longing to hear your truth longing to hear your good word for our lives today. So give us hearts that are open. Speak to us now, we pray. Amen. Well, today we're really talking about the importance of context. So as we dive into these Beatitudes, and we're taking a deep dive this summer, we're starting with, today with the passages that happen immediately before Jesus starts teaching. When he says, repent, the kingdom of heaven is near. Or I like what Eugene Peterson says in his translation, change your life. God is here. And immediately after this extended teaching that begins in Matthew 5 with the Beatitudes and continues through the ninth chapter, immediately afterwards, what Jesus does is he sends his disciples out two by two. And what are the instructions? Tell people the kingdom of God is here. And so what is this teaching about the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God that Jesus wants us to understand? And how do we read the Beatitudes and the Sermon of the Mount in light of this context on both sides of the scripture reading that are intended to, to flag for us that what it's all about is that the kingdom of heaven is here. So, as we think about this, I was reminded of a story of a deeply, deeply faithful man. Uh, his name was Fred Smith. He was a wonderful uh, businessman, but most of all, he was really a dedicated Christian. And he spent his retirement years mentoring pastors and other Christian leaders in the faith and just was sincerely uh, a wonderful Christian man. And as he was getting into the later years of his life, he had several um, health conditions. He was on uh, dialysis. He really was not doing very well. And he was hospitalized in intensive care. And as the family gathered around his bed, over and over, Fred repeated, I want to go home. I want to go home. So the family, honoring his wishes, talked with the doctors, and they stopped dialysis, and they gathered around his bed, and they sang hymns, and they said prayers. And as his daughter Linda was talking to him, she was saying, okay, Dad, we heard you. You want to go home? And so now is the time. We've stopped dialysis, and it's going to be time now for you to step from here to there, from here in this life to home in heaven. And with great effort, Fred spoke, saying, I meant Parkhurst Avenue, <laughs> not heaven. <laughs> so the doctors were quickly called in, and dialysis res resumed, and Fred had three more good years on this earth. <laughs> it's kind of a dramatic story. <laughs> but it reveals this truth. 
And it reveals how easily we can be confused about where is our true home and where truly is heaven. Jesus uh, was working with his disciples and teaching them that the kingdom of God was near. For Jesus, the kingdom of heaven had everything to do with life on this side of the grave. Well, many of us are inclined to think about heaven as something out there beyond that we're waiting for. Jesus' proclamation is that the kingdom of heaven has drawn near. The kingdom of heaven has come, in fact, in the very being of Jesus Christ. And through Jesus' power, the kingdom of heaven comes through you, through us, if we'll let it. And Jesus doesn't just talk about the kingdom of heaven. What Jesus does is he starts enacting it. So he goes from town to town, teaching, helping, and especially healing. Now, when you think about uh, the first century and the importance of healing, it's hard to over-exaggerate how needed healing really was by the people that Jesus touched. Because not only would these people be suffering physically without the benefits of Tylenol, which we tend to take for granted, or all the other uh, options that are at our disposal today. But in the first century, in this place, if you were sick, people isolated from you. People would stay away. Not because they had a modern understanding of germs and contagion, like we do, but because they believed, actually, illness was a sign of disfavor from God. So if you were sick, not only were you feeling miserable, but your community would stay away from you, thinking that in some way you were immoral or had done something wrong. Can you imagine how isolating that would be? Can you imagine how painful it would be? On top of being physically ill, to be excluded from your friends, most of your family, your community. And if you were the caregiver or the caretaker, as I know many of you are in this room, that taint would affect you too and your social relationships. So when Jesus came and he would teach and he would heal, he was giving the gift, not only the valuable, priceless, important gift of physical health, which drives all that we can do emotionally and spiritually too, but also he was giving back to them their place in community. He was ending their isolation. He was bringing them from the outside back in where they belonged. He was declaring to the community that not only is this person deserving of healing, but God is actively going out of the way because this person is valuable, important, and worthy. And in this way, probably more dramatically than we can even understand here today, Jesus was saying, the kingdom of heaven has drawn near. The kingdom of complete healing and well-being is here. The kingdom of authentic and beloved community is here. So I know what you're probably thinking, thanks for the history lesson, right? Yet, it's so important for us to understand what amazing work this was that Jesus was doing. <clears throat> and this isn't just ancient history, because it's about our present and future too. Jesus' life and teaching aren't recorded to tell us who he was and what he did back then, not that alone, but to tell us what God is doing now and what is the work we are invited to Now, what is it that it means to take part in God's heaven on earth? 
it reminded me, okay, and this is quite old, but have, is, have you seen the movie Shawshank Redemption? I know I'm kind of aging myself with that reference. Oh, thank God a few of our young people have seen it too. It's a classic, right? It's a modern classic. And you remember that scene, Brooks, played by Morgan Freeman, is serving a sentence for murder. And now, 50 years later, he's about uh, to be paroled. And he is afraid of the real world. In fact, he uh, plots to potentially kill somebody in prison, so they'll keep him. His plan fails, uh, but he weeps like a baby when he's eventually released from prison. And the other inmates are discussing why he would be so upset. And Red, excuse me, Red is the one uh, who's Morgan Freeman, uh, says this classic line. He says, it's a funny thing about these prisons. It's a funny thing about these prison walls. At first you hate them. Then you get used to them. Then you grow dependent on them. These kind of prisons can happen to all of us. Many of us know what it's like to be walled in in our lives by an awareness of our brokenness. And if we live long enough with such an awareness and a void of hope, if we lose hope that things can be better, we can get used to those walls and even depend on them. And yet, even there, even behind our walls, even beyond our defenses, God still comes. One of the things Jesus would later teach his disciples to pray for was for things to be on earth as they are in heaven. In heaven, tears are wiped away. There is no poverty, sickness, suffering, addiction, bondage, division, hatred, racism, oppression, sin, guilt, or shame. So in calling on us to pray for things on earth to be as in heaven, Jesus is calling us to join the movement of prayerfully contending for the transformation of lives. We see heaven happen when we witness moments where poverty uh, is no more, where sickness is healed, where suffering is alleviated, where sobriety settles in, and justice established, and equality is affirmed, and sins are forgiven. Jesus sat down and said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The Beatitudes are Jesus' commentary on all that his disciples have been witnessing and will witness by being by Jesus' side in the future. They are his inauguration speech. They are a speech where he says what our lives are supposed to be like today. So I invite you to remember Fred Smith. Home wasn't just about heaven. It was also here on earth, on Parkchester Drive. And for Jesus, the kingdom of heaven is also on this side of the grave. A well-known pastor and author, Frederick Buechner, wrote this. If we only had eyes to see and ears to hear and wits to understand, we would know that the kingdom of God, in the sense of holiness, goodness, and beauty, is as close as breathing and is crying out to be born within ourselves and within the world. We would know that the kingdom of God is what all of us hunger for above all other things, even when we don't know the name or realize what we're starving to death for. The kingdom of God is where our best dreams come from and our truest prayers. We glimpse it at the moments when we find ourselves being better than we are and wiser than we know. We catch sight of it when at some moment of crisis, a strength seems to come to us that is greater than our own strength. The kingdom of God is where we belong. It is home. And whether we realize it or not, we are homesick for it. This beautiful idea of home is what we're talking about when we talk about the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. And this, my friends, is what we're called to live into together as a community who strives to let heaven be like earth. Let earth be like heaven, excuse me. So let us pray that this may be so. Amen. 
For our song of response, I loved this uh, beautiful video, and I think it's such a great reminder that God's kingdom is here. It's in the everyday. It's in the things that we experience day in and day out, and maybe sometimes take for granted as being the mundane things about life, but it truly are God's kingdom here on earth, God's presence with us. When I was a boy each week On Sunday we would go to church and Pay attention to the priest and He would read the holy word And consecrate the holy bread And everyone would kneel and bow and Today the only difference is Everything is holy now Everything Everything, everything is holy now. And when I was in Sunday school, we would learn about the time Moses split the sea in two. Jesus made the water wine. And I remember feeling sad. Miracles don't happen still but now I can't keep track Cause everything's a miracle Everything, everything, everything's a miracle Wine from water is not so small Better magic trick is that anything is here at all. So the challenging thing becomes not to look for miracles, to find him where there isn't one. When holy water was rare at best, it barely wet my fingertips. Now I have to hold my breath Like I'm swimming in a sea of air It used to be a world half there Heaven's second rain hand me down But I walk it with a reverend air Cause everything is holy now Singing like a scripture verse It made me want to bow my head I remember when church let out How things have changed since then Everything is holy now It used to be a world half there Heaven's second rate hand me down But I walk it with a reverend air Cause everything is holy
I think Jesus was trying to remind us that we have the opportunity to look at everything as being holy now when he took the two most common elements of his day, bread and wine, which people drank in the first century like water because it was clean and uh, avail- widely available. He took the two things that graced the tables of both the poor and the rich, the two things that were common to the everyday life of the people he was surrounded by. And he used these and said, do this in remembrance of me. And so as we come to this communion table today, I invite you to remember that this feast also can happen wherever it is that you break bread, whenever it is that you take refreshment of water or wine. God is with you. The kingdom of God is here with you. And so in just a few moments, you'll be invited to come forward row by row to receive Holy Communion. You do not need to be a member of this church. If you are seeking God in your life, we invite you to please come and take part in this wonderful gift of Holy Communion because we believe that this is a way that God's grace flows to each of us. We believe these few bites not only are nourishment for our bodies, they are a feast for our soul and can help us with whatever challenges we are facing in life. So I invite you uh, to please come. We remember that on the night that Jesus gave himself up for us, he took the bread, he gave thanks to God, and he broke it, giving it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which has been broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, when the meal was over, he took the cup, and he gave thanks to God, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink of this, all of you, for this is my blood poured out for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink in remembrance of me. And so we come together now, indeed remembering Jesus' amazing life and teaching remembering how he gave himself for our sake, and remembering how he triumphed even over death for us. And with joy and thanksgiving, we come to this table to receive. I'd like to invite those who are helping to serve communion to come forward at this time. And I also want to remind you, if you need a gluten-free option, simply point at yourself when you come through the line, and we'll make sure to get you a gluten-free Uh, bread while you're here. Let us pray. Oh God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and the fruit of the vine, that they may be for us the body and blood of Christ, and that we may become the body of Christ, the bringers of the kingdom of heaven on this earth. Amen. Come and receive.
Amen. Thank you, Kim. I'd like to invite Mason to come forward and lead us in prayers for the world, uh, followed by our prayers for the people. Dear God, with the uh, elections for the European Parliament coming up this week, we pray that the people of Europe would make an informed decision for who is to represent them. And we pray for the peoples of North and South Korea, where recently there have been some tensions, including North Korea has been flying balloons filled with trash across the border into South Korea, and that does not help anybody. We pray that people and leaders would see sense and realize that justice and constructive engagement with each other is best. Lord, in your love. Do we have prayer concerns in our basket today? There were no prayer concerns? Then let's continue in our time of prayer. Oh God, we thank you that you have come to bring heaven on earth. We ask that you would help us to live into your kingdom values. We know that you see those whom the world does not see and that you notice those who we might pass by. We know that you have love for all of your children, deserving or not. So we ask that you would help us to search our own heart and have the courage to overcome our hesitancy and to love our neighbor just as you love us. Lord, in your love. We pray with joy for those who are experiencing the joys of life, for those celebrating birthdays, weddings, for tiny babies on the way. We pray also for those who are in life's dark valley. We pray for those here and elsewhere who struggle with illness, disability, chronic pain. We pray for those who struggle to make it 10 minutes at a time. We pray for those who are lost in the deep hole of mental illness. We pray for those fighting the demons of addiction. Reach out and heal all of us with your tender love. Lord, in your love. We continue, O oh God, to offer prayers for peace in our world, especially in the Middle East and in Ukraine. Lord, we ask that you would work a miracle of peace with justice for this world. Lord, in your love. And we pray for our church. We pray for Glendale, that we might be committed to learn how to be community that makes space for all voices that uses the power we have for your good and not for our own, for your will and not for our agendas, for your justice and not simply what works for us. Have mercy on us, heal us. For these things we pray, as well as with the groans of our spirit, as we pray together as one family, as you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, in thy name, blessed name, come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us to stay our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thy is the kingdom and the power. Amen. I invite you now to stand as we sing our uh, closing hymn. And if you have an announcement towards the end of this hymn, I invite you to come forward as well to be prepared to offer that.
may be seated. Go ahead. Well, when you came in today, you got your reminder. This is it. I want you to take this home and uh, hang it someplace and pray about it and think about it. We need to paint our building, which is huge. And uh, we can get the building painted and a new floor in our elementary classroom downstairs for $3,500. But we need you to ante up and help us get this money so we can move forward on it. If you've got a calendar with you, will you set the week as September 9th? Because that's the week we're painting. And uh, the Hispanic Church is providing all the labor. But they've asked us if we could come along behind the sprayers at ground level not up on the rooftops, and just roll behind them. So if you would have some time, the week is September 9th, we invite you to come and be a part of this painting project, get to know the Hispanic Church. And there's been a suggestion that perhaps we should do lunch for them sometime and kind of get the two congregations together. So pray about this. Remember, thank you. There'll be a chart in the back there. We'll put our progress down each week. I have uh, two quick announcements. The first one is we are looking for musicians this summer. So if you or someone you know has that gift of music and uh, they may be willing to uh, share it in worship with us, will you please let me know uh, so we can arrange that? We do uh, have a small stipend we can offer. Uh, secondly, beginning a week from today, I am uh, leading a wonderful study called Christ Walk. So if you're interested in growing in your uh, physical fitness while you grow in your spiritual fitness, this is a wonderful experience. And so we'll be meeting uh, each Sunday night at 6 p.m. Uh, I believe the class is eight weeks. And so if you're interested, please join us next Sunday at 6 p.m. And if you could also just let me know if you're interested so I know how many people to expect. Uh, so uh, you can look for more information about that in your weekly update in, by, by email as well. So now, my friends, I invite you to go out in the world and look for all the ways that everything is holy now because God's kingdom has come near in Jesus Christ. And I invite you to consider how is God inviting you to be part of this magnificent work of bringing a little bit of heaven to earth. And may you, through your words, your actions, through the everyday experiences of your life, bring hope and joy to those around you so that all may know indeed the kingdom of heaven is here. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.